G'day friends, it's Andrew here from Nature's Image Photography and in this video I'm taking a look at the Panasonic Lumix S 85mm f1.8 lens and I'm also going to share a couple of portrait shoots taken using that lens shot on the Lumix S5 Mark II. Now my subscribers know I'm mostly about landscapes and wildlife and since I've had the full frame camera with just the 20-60mm to lens it's played a big role in my landscape photography. But occasionally I dabble in a bit of portrait photography and last year I had the chance to grab the 85mm for my occasional model shoots around the Sunshine Coast. Now I think it's time to let you see some of my results and give you a bit more info about that lens. If you find this video helpful you can always thank me with a coffee and I'll put the link in the information below. And of course if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe while you're here. So let's start with a look at the lens itself. The 85mm f1.8 is 82mm long. Now if that doesn't mean that much to you, well it's just a fraction smaller than the kit 20-60mm to lens that came with my S5 II. So if you've used that lens then you'll have a good idea of the size of this prime lens. It has a magnesium alloy body and at just over 350 grams, it's surprisingly lightweight for a lens that is also built to be dust and weather resistant. The minimum focus distance is 80 centimeters, which is great for a good close-up portrait photography, but not nearly close enough for this to double as a macro lens. The lens isn't image stabilized, so I have to rely on the excellent in-body stabilization of the S5 II, which is okay with me. I do most of my shoots outdoors, and at f1.8 my shutter speed is generally so fast that camera shake really isn't an issue anyway. With no image stabilization, there's only one switch on the side for manual and autofocus, so overall the 85mm has a very simple and uncluttered design. To complete the package, you also get a good quality lens hood that's deep enough to block out nuisance light flare and a few drops of rain. Like all my Panasonic lens hoods, it's easy to attach and it clicks firmly into place. And it'll stay firmly in place until you press the quick release button on the side. Like everything else about this lens design, it's not flashy, but it gets the job done. And now let's look at the actual lens performance, and I have to say it does a great job combined with the new hybrid AF system on the S5 II. The lens is silent. When I track my subject in AFC, I can't feel or hear the focus motor working, but it's smooth, fast, and accurate. For shooting stills, I generally use face and eye detection, and I find it nails the eye every time. I've been known to take hundreds of photos over a couple of hours at a photo shoot, and as I look through the images I'm hard pressed to find even one or two where the focus hasn't locked onto the eye, even when there's lots of interference around the eye like in this shot here. I read one review about the 85mm f1.8 that said the lens could almost be too clinically sharp, and I guess looking closely at some of my photos I can see what they mean. The images can be so clear that I often find myself having to reduce the clarity in my editing to put a bit more flattering softness back into some of my portraits. And having said I use face and eye detection for most of this work, I should mention there's an exception to the rule. Occasionally, usually when the subject is a bit further away and not always looking straight to camera, I find the focus can drift away from the subject. In those situations I simply switch to the more general human detection autofocus mode and the problem pretty much goes away. It's a funny thing about portraits that we obsess over sharpness when it comes to focus, but when it comes to backgrounds we're just as fussy about softness. Of course I'm talking about bokeh, and this lens performs exactly as I hoped it would. Whether I'm shooting from close range or a little further away, the lens does a nice job of isolating the subject and giving me a pleasingly soft and very natural background. I can't compare it just now to any other lenses because I haven't used them, but I have to say I'm perfectly satisfied with results like these. So all in all, I'm really happy with the Panasonic S 85mm f1.8 lens. It's lightweight, it's weather resistant, it's sharp, and it integrates perfectly with the autofocus system on the S5 Mark II. As a nature photographer who only occasionally dabbles in portraits, chances are this is the only portrait lens I'll ever buy for the S5 II. And if that's the case, then I'm satisfied that I've made the right choice. And now I'm going to finish the video with a look at the two recent photo shoots I've done with this lens. I'm going to share a few of my favourite photos, along with the exposure settings because I know a lot of people like to see them. You'll also see a bit of behind the scenes footage shot using my Micro Four Thirds Lumix G9 Mark II. Now let's start by introducing the wonderful young model who helped me out with this project. Then we get straight into the photos, so thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. 
I'm Andrew Goodall. So the best way to really demonstrate what a lens can do is to get out and take some photos. And since this is a portrait lens, uh, we're going to get out and do a bit of portrait photography. Uh, so I've been joined today by the lovely Yuka. Hello. And uh, we are going to get out and do a couple of shoots. We're going to do one in the rainforest and one at the beach, all in natural light and all using the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, along with the 85mm f1.8 lens, which is obviously the feature of this video. Uh, so all the photos you're going to see are taken on this lens, with the exception of this clip you're looking at now and the behind the scenes stuff, uh, which were, is all taken on the Lumix G9 Mark II. So if you're one of my uh, Micro Four Thirds followers and you're wondering what's happened to that camera, don't worry, I use it all the time and it's actually working away in the background right now while we shoot this video. Uh, now, uh, the plan here is I'm going to take some photos of Yuka and in return um, uh, uh, for Yuka helping me out on this video, I'm going to provide her with some photos for her jewellery brand, which is called... It's called Daisy Jewel. Daisy Jewel uh, and I'm going to put a link to Daisy Jewel in the information below if you're interested to find out more uh, but for now we're going to get out into the rainforest uh, and get shooting. <laughs> 